Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner Classic Last Known Classics. This is episode number 2237, double shot number 2131. First, we have the final tray of the collectors from Subway Volume 6 and a, a Green Lantern tray. We have Superboy Paradox Volume 5, which collects issues 26 to 34 and the Future Cell One Shot. Not going to discuss Future Cell One Shot because I've discussed it already. <clears throat> now, the thing with these issues are I remember these issues when they came out is that nobody was a fan of this era at all. They never referred to in their reviews as Superboy, this is a Victor Tile's name. They refer to him as John Lane Kent because the character was not Superboy, was not their Superboy. So they can't refer to any issue this whole run, like John Lane Kent number 26, number 27, number 30. Yes, it was like that for some strange reason. Now, this is, yeah, this is the John Lane Kent issues. John Lane Kent, if you don't know who the heck this guy is, this is the guy, according to the time, according to the continuity of this particular series, he is the genetic template for Superboy. The real Superboy, that is, Connor Kent. Yes, he's not a clone. He was originally dimensioned as the clone of Lois and, and Superman, and that was changed to he's a clone of this, this guy who appears in these issues. Oh, by the way, he gets killed off by the end of this run. No, I'm not kidding about that. He he gets killed off. As of why he got killed off? I don't know. I think maybe because basically no one gave a damn about this guy. Purely because basically the guy was a big humongous jerk. Maybe just a waste of space. Oh, if you're curious though, he appeared in the Teen Titans second annual. Yep. That's the first showed up, and then by the last issue of this book, he's done. Yeah, and by the way, this version does not exist anymore. Nope. Yeah, and apparently, this guy's in a positive future where his, fa his parents were Clark and and Lois. And as out the fire was Harvest. Yes, Harvest appeared in these issues. Oh, by the way, did you know he also guest stars some issues of Teen Titans period of time and issues Seek Origins? Yes. So you might be asking with this particular book uh with these issues, am I done talking about Harvest? Yes. Harvest is here mostly in flashbacks. Now, I'm not sure why this version was created. He just was. Oh, and by the way, the writing in this book is quite interesting to say the least. The main writers of the issues are Marv Wolfman, Aaron Kidder, with Frank Machen and Frank W. Bobby, Artwork by Jorge Jimenez, Andreas Galu, Marcus Irwin, and Ben Coldwell. It just basically this Superboy who claimed to be Superboy, just trying to do what he's try like. Okay, let's have first try if I Cassandra Sandmark. So Mark Wolfman basically was the main writer for these issues. No, seriously, he was. He was, in fact, the main writer for the issue of Superboy. Excuse me, you might be asking, why the heck did DC WA tap the great Marv Wolfman for these issues? My only guess is because he was going to speak in terms with them. Compared to some other writers. Now, did these have a consistent tone with them? Yes, they did. Now you might be asking, are were these the only issues that he wrote for this book? Yeah, uh, no, he left after a very short period of time. 
how short a period of time? He was only here for five issues and he left. Yes, the remaining issues were done by Aaron Kidder. You think about Aaron Kidder, isn't he an artist? Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, he had a really good run in Axe Comics. You read his Axe Comics run. Yeah, basically the writing may be hit or miss on people, but he had really good artwork. Yeah, he did from issue 25 to 50. He did like a couple issues of Superman. He did the Parasite one shot, the Superman Doomed. Uh, he did some issues of Grand uh, Grand and Guardian. I'm pretty much talking about everything for this guy. Now you might be curious though, did he write any other books besides Superboy? Yes, he did. He co-wrote issues 4350 of Action Comics Volume 2, of course, Parasite One Shot in, in the Annual for Superman. Yeah, he co-wrote the issues for Action Comics when Greg Pak was in the book. Yes, and what issues were these? The Truth. Yes, The Truth. He co-wrote The Truth issues for Superman. Well, yes. Now you might be asking, with this pretty much mostly been reviewed... Uh, with this with this trade here, am I done with Aaron Kidder's time at DC? Because I pretty much have covered like everything the man has done for DC. Uh, everything except for, except for the Parasite one shot. Yeah, which as far as I can tell, that is not collecting trade. I've not actually reviewed the villains and one shots. <clears throat> but for the final trade for this series, it's it's okay. That's just the long gist of it. There's not really else, not not really a lot to talk about here for this one, because I do agree with some people's opinion on this character. He is completely unlikable, and one thing at least got to praise this book basically for the these issues. The tone was consistent the whole run, unlike basically how they kept changing his quotes for the previous issues. This is very consistent, and for the conclusion to this very mixed run. Now, my own thoughts on this run, by the way, I get the trade itself, Superboy, Volume 5 Paradox, a 8.5 out of 10. It's just an okay book. Final thoughts on this run, this book had a very good start. I would probably say the opening issues are really good. I enjoy those. Yeah, those have really good tone to it. I would probably say the books are falling apart with issue 20. That's probably when the books are falling apart. Where, if other so was consistent for those 19 issues... And then something happened where, like, every couple of issues we have to keep changing his quo for no reason. And have a ridiculous crossover, which, excuse me, from what I can tell, no one was a fan of this at all. It's a, it's a crossover that had really, really bad artwork. What crossover was it? Krypton Returns. Yep, Krypton Returns. A crossover that was roughly four parts. It took up Axel in number two. And issues 25 for Supergirl, Superboy, and Superman. For Superman, it was for Volume 3. Supergirl was Volume 6. And Superboy was Volume 6. And here's the strange thing about Superboy after this book wrapped up. Did you know he actually returned for the, for the final set of issues for Supergirl? Yeah, that version of Superboy. Now, for John Lane Ken, he's pretty much a wife from existence. But as for Connor, he did come back after this. Well, here's the thing. In this book, he did pop up for the last issue, which is where they killed off John Kent. Yep. He's actually resurrected in the final issue of the series. Yeah, and also for some reason, they was referred to him as Khan. They, a lot of this book, when he's in here, he's looking for his Khan. Not much Connor, per se. It's just something basically is not really talked about very much at all.
Yes, but Khan himself would return. Uh, the original Superboy, that is. He would actually return for the annual for Teen Titans. Yeah, he returned for that. Then he didn't do a lot, per se, but he would make a proper return in the pages of Young Justice by, Mark, by Michael Bendis. He was also a primary recurring character during Bendis' time on Action Comics. Yep, he was a recurring character in the book. As a matter of fact, he's actually been uh, been part of when both Phil Kenny Johnson and Brian Michael Bendis. Mostly, anyways. For, for the Bendis one, he basically appeared up until uh, 1,028 as a recurring character. Or at least mostly a supporting character. And then he returned once uh, Phil Kenny Johnson came, once he came back a couple years later. And he's in private feature books since then. He's been occasionally in our books, but mostly put, he's been appearing a good amount of everywhere, per se. But it's like, if you want to think of prior books featuring this continuous version of Superboy, uh, you gotta think of this Superboy book. Uh, he, he was a recurring character in Ravengers. As a matter of fact, he never really interacted with Superman very much until Rebirth. Yep. But these were just okay issues, per se. Next up, we have something really awesome. We have another preview of the blog. Guess now we have Green Lantern, Agent Orange. Yes, this is the storyline that's the debut of Larflees. Yes, this contains issues 39 to 42 of Green Lantern Volume 4. So, of course, we have Jeff Johnson as the writer. Everest is one of the artists in this book with Philip Tan, Eddie Burrows, but this guy first from this guy. Robert Albuquerque and Doug Mankey. And this guy, too. Yeah, I met two of the artists working this one, which is interesting. Yep. Yeah, well, this book contains, actually, with 38 to 42, a lot of Blackest Night number zero. Yeah, because mostly put, this book is now leading into Blackest Night. Agent Orange most took up the, the Green Lantern issues in a nutshell. So, basically, a lot of this is, well... Still dealing with the aftermath of the Sinestro Corps War. So we, we started with the Vega system. We have the controllers come across this symbol. And mostly put these issues, we have more build up of the Blue Lantern Corps. Not much Red Lantern because we were exploring that last story arc. Mostly put it's a build up of them and the whole thing with the Orange Lanterns. Yep. That's mostly what it is. And the whole thing with the Orange Lantern Corps is they're obsessed with greed. Yes, they have an obsession with greed. And there's also a little more, not much for Star Sapphire per se, but more with Fatality where she's looking for Jon Stewart. Yes. The same woman who also at one point injured Jon Stewart at her debut appearance. Yep, she actually injured him because at one point Jon Stewart was wheelchair bound. Yeah, and then, of course, basically, when the reboot happened, these two slept together. I still bring it up because that's what happened. So. Yeah, and the whole point of her being here, just torment Jon Stewart. Yeah, so it's like Hal Jordan deals with, first deals with Red Lanterns, now deals with the Orange Lanterns. Oh, I love this cover. My, 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 Yes, that is typical Larf Fleece because he's obsessed with, because he, because he's greedy. Oh, yeah, and also, this is my favorite thing. We have Fatality kissing Jon Stewart. I know you. You don't hate me, Jon. Doesn't mean I like you. Next time you're among the remains of Zani, bearing the grass of your breathing your wife beneath the weight of my home world. Do with a sapphire sorry sapphire able to forgive yourself, John Stewart. Yes. It's almost like the way Jeff Johns wrote it here is like Fatality really wants to have sex with John Stewart. Because I think maybe Jeff Johns wanted him to go over his grieving process. I mean, here's the thing. His wife was killed in issue 601 for Action Comics back in the 80s. 
At this point in time, in over 20 years since the woman's death, and John Stewart's still grieving for her? Yeah. Oh, yeah, then we have where Hal Dorman becomes briefly a member of the Orange Lantern Corps. Just sort of trap, thanks to him being part of the Blue Lantern, he's been cured from it. And here's something interesting, though. The Spectre himself shows up. Yes. Actually, not Spectre, somebody else. He looks, I mean, look at this guy. He looks like the Spectre, but it's not him. I thought it was going to go with the chalk white skin. So, let me have basically Larfleet's fighting him. And eventually, they find the corpse of the Anti Monitor. And they come across this black lantern. And thinking, where are we? Location classified. Classified? Why is it classified? Why? Because Necron is rising up from beneath it. Yes, those arms belong to Necron himself. And then we have a backup story. It was Origins, uh, it's called Origins and Omens. A lot of the books basically have this period of time. So mostly put, basically, it's more of a build-up for, like, it's a lot of teasing for John. It's basically a John Stewart type story. Where it's like, oh, let's have Fatality tease a possible romance with him. Yeah, that's one story. Another one is simply focused on Lar Fleas, which is interesting. Yeah, then we have the cover images, and that's it for this book. This book is really good. Now, of course, I'm hoping next time I get hands on the next two trades. And by the way, I love these. Um, first, you have the Green Lantern Core, the Red Lantern Core. Oh, hi, Belize. Agent Orange, Avarice, which is greed. Yep. The Sinestro Core. Lisa Dark. Look at that smoking hat. There's like two babes in here. My gosh. It's an Estro. Oh, yeah. Lisa Dark. She sleeps there. Blue Lanterns. There actually is one woman here besides Sinan. Indigo Tribe. Led by Indigo One. Who they retcon post Flashpoint as she's no enemy of Abin Sur. The Star Sapphire Core. All women. Oh, by the way, there actually is one male member with John Stewart briefly. So we have Fatality, a woman who could potentially be a, a love interest for John Stewart, which that proved to be true, and Carol Ferris. Which, by the way, post Flashpoint, they, they changed these two women's attire where it's more. where it was like less exposure because here it's almost like you, you look at them and they're like, it's barely covering them up and it's like lots of skin. Then we have the Black Lanterns, where it's just a black hand. Let's see. I see image. I see, looks like other zombies here. I see it looks like Mirror Master. I still don't recognize you, but based on the arms, you could be anybody. Yeah, but this book is awesome. Still proves the fact that this run is, is, is basically uh, one of Jeff John's best books he's done his whole career. I give Green Lantern Agent Orange a 10 out of 10 because it's just, just pure awesomeness because I love Jeff John's work. Okay, so, by the way, I have two more trades up to go for his rougher Green Lantern, and that's it. Can you believe that? Only two more trades left? And the trades to collect the Blackest Night issues and the Brightest Day issues. And that's it. You're thinking, really? That's it? Just those two? Yeah. Hmm. That's indeed true. Oh, in the case of this, when it comes to... I've been reviewing also, because we've been a while for Super... For for New 52 trades. With finishing up Superboy, you're probably thinking, okay, how many more trades are left to go for? How many trade series are to go for the New 52? They're not like limited series. There are five left. The only ones left to go are All-Star Western, The Movement... Voodoo, Dial H, and Frankenstein Age of Shade, and that's it. You're thinking, really? Only five left? Yes, seriously. I have only five more left to go, and that's pretty much it. Now, the only one has the most is also much. Everything else has got like, well, th the movement, Voodoo, and Dial H, well, got, all three of them got three, three left to go, two left to go apiece, while 
Frankenstein's machine has got one left. Yep, so that's going to be pretty much it. Take a look at you. Stay tuned for my three anime tomorrow, which will be and then on my smartphone, Eden Zero, Demon Slayer, actually four anime. Um, there's also going to be Case Closed and maybe Comic Corner. Two things. Thanks for you. Bye.